This video is brought to you in association with Kitchich Toys, the UK's home for retro and vintage toys. Disney has made so many incredible films. The animated classics collection currently stands at 54, I believe. And so in all that lot, there was bound to be a few duds here and there, which there are. But there was also bound to be a few forgotten gems too. And this is a list of my top 10 of them. Start with an honourable mention. Atlantis, The Lost Empire. Interesting design choices, well told story and great characters. Now even if it missed out on the top 10 spot here, it does deserve a lot more praise than it get. Okay, I admit it, this is a long way from the greatest Disney movie of all time. It is slow, fairly boring, with dull characters. But the villain is interesting, the setting's different, and it does have some attention for what it tried to do. Disney seems to have just written it out of their history, giving it less attention than even Song of the South. What is it about high fantasy and British myth that attracts Disney and then seems to leave them embarrassed? The film has striking visuals, a different take on some well-known characters and tells an epic story. This, is, this film is well worth seeing, but doesn't seem to fit into the classic Disney narratives. So I guess it doesn't get talked about that much. This film got a lot of attention when it got released, and it proved to be a fun romp, but it never seemed to catch on. Maybe it was the stereotypical villain or the forced eccentricities of the Robinsons, certainly the Adams family they are not, but it is worth sticking with for the last moment, cool tribute that deserves a lot more praise. In the 70s Disney was having a bit of a tough time, but it still turned out some good movies. This one falls back into the British myths category, so maybe it's no wonder that it's undervalued. Even with that though, Alan Dale is voiced by Roger Miller, so I'm always going to put this film over if I can. Worth watching just for his song, Notting Nottingham. Another film that I think needs more praise because of a voice performance from a man better known as a singer. In this context, it's New York City's own Billy Joel, a perfect choice for the story's change of setting. It also gets the character a great song. It's actually a good retelling of the story overall. And it's often overlooked just because it comes before the great revival. Now I know a lot of people will argue that this is one of the better known films. Mostly because of the proliferation of Everybody Wants to Be a Cat. But just because the song gets lots of plays, doesn't mean the film is watched that much. And it's more than just that one great song that's worth recommending it too. I mean, for example, O'Malley is such a fun character for one thing. Now I have to declare a personal investment in this one. I was there in Florida when this was being made. I got to see it getting drawn. But this isn't about my personal investment. It's about so many other great things. Things like the proto donkey Mushu. Like the amazing songs including the awesome I'll Make a Man Out of You. The well built story. It's so much about this to cherish. Such a forgotten gem. Landing between The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast was always going to be a difficult place to be. Especially if the company isn't as behind you as it could be. Which is such a shame, because this is a really well told character piece. And a realistic romance, or at least as real as it can be between two mice. It's understated, which is both its biggest charm and the reason it doesn't get its due. I'm a fan of detectives, 
I make no secret of that, so I was always going to love this film. But it's not about how much I love it. It's about the fact that the film misses out on so much cred that it deserves. I mean, it has Vincent Price in it, damn it. it he's been so delicious here too. How is this not one of Disney's biggest films? Oh yeah, that's right. Came right in the middle of the dark days of Disney. Lost so many greats that way. Almost certainly the last Disney full-length 2D animation. Mostly because of how this film did. Now let's be clear, it didn't flop, it just didn't reach its expectations. Now a lot of reasons have been given for this, including missing the boy audience because of the word princess in the title. But whatever the case, it's a real shame. The animation was just gorgeous. The songs were amazing. And the character worked really well together. And as for the villain, well, he made my top 10 Disney villains list, so, well, he can't be that bad. So, that was my list. Do you agree? Disagree? Wonder how I could like that film? Let me know in the comments, kindly preferably. And otherwise, subscribe and share for more top 10 goodness. Till next time, see you